Uh, but right now I'm going to pass it on to the two architects of our Global Low Volatility Fund, uh, Mike Harvey and Edmund Ho. Uh, I guess I'll start off with a bit of introduction about myself and then I'll pass it over to Mike to kick off the presentation on the Low Vol Fund. Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Edmund Ho, and as Mark alluded to earlier in this present at the beginning of this presentation, um, I'm a senior analyst on the ESG team at Van City Investment Management. Uh, I've been here since uh, 2022, so that's about two and a half years. Uh, and prior to my current role, um, I spent about 14 years at the asset management arm of a large Canadian bank, uh, 11 of those working within the Canadian equity space. Uh, some of my specialized uh, specialization within that role was in portfolio construction and blending in uh, quant methods into a fundamental investment process. So this global low wall fund was a great opportunity to leverage some of the experience that I've gained over um, the last chapter of my career and uh, incorporating ESG practices and uh, putting into practice in this new fund. Um, so Mike, over to you. Thanks, Edmund. Uh, yeah, so uh, my name's Mike Harvey, and uh, I'm a senior equity analyst uh, on the Van City Investment Management Team. I came out of retirement in uh, in 2022 to join the team, and since that time, I've been spending quite a bit of time on a number of projects, but one really is in the design, development, testing of a global low vol uh, investment strategy. And I'm going to be really excited to uh, to show you the presentation and answer any questions you may have. Prior to my retirement in 2020, where I retired as a equity portfolio manager at at a BC pension fund, um, I had worked there for 20 years, and over that span, I had managed a number of different equity portfolios, including um, index funds, quantitative funds, synthetic equity funds. And I've also managed money in both the developed and emerging market regions. Uh, so I was excited to come uh, and join Van City Investment Management, uh, bring my my skills and, and experience of my career, and uh, and uh, bring it forward to to Van City and, and the investors here. Um, so yeah, with with that, I'm just going to jump right into the presentation and happy to answer any questions at the end of it, of course. So the Van City Investment Management Global Low Volatility Fund. So what is low volatility investing? Um, it's not new. Well, it, well, it's new here. It's not new. It's been around for decades. And in fact, we can go all the way back to the early 1970s when Robert Hagen and James Hines published a paper talking about uh, low volatility investing. And ever since then, there's been numerous articles and research papers talking about it and that it in actually showing that it is a viable investment strategy. In other words, investing in stocks that have low volatility, there's a place for it and they generate returns for the equity investors. So when we talk about volatility, what are we talking about? Really, it just means dampening the price swings that investors experience. So low volatility stocks will have shallower price swings. That's really it in a nutshell. So just to illustrate it a little bit here, uh, it, like I mentioned, lower volatility means smaller swings in portfolio value. And on the chart on the left, and please note this is for illustrative purposes only, it shows a hypothetical comparison of low and high volatility return series. And as you can see, uh, one is much shallower, the, the yellow one, and the orange or reddish, I should have, so I apologize, I should have made these uh, colors much more differentiated. But you can clearly see that one return series is much shallower than the other one. That's really what we talk about in low volatility. Those swings will be shallower. And if we look over to the chart on the right, well, what does that mean? And so if we compare the return series, really you can see how the shallower one uh, still grows in value. It's just not, it's a little bit more of a smoother ride for the investor. We don't get the extreme price swings that we see in more volatility more volatile stocks. 
So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about low volatile, low volatility investing is building a portfolio that has shallower uh, price swings from securities that, that have those same sort of attributes. So what do you get at Van City in the global low volatility fund? Well, and I'm just going to read this. I'm going to do everything a presenter uh, doesn't want to do, but I'm going to read this, then we're going to unpack it. The global low volatility fund is a globally diversified, fossil fuel free, socially responsible investment portfolio of public listed securities selected for their low level of historical volatility with the potential to compound shareholder value. Okay, there's a lot there, so let's unpack this. Globally diversified, that's important. So while I, when I designed it, it had to be global. It wasn't just US, wasn't just Europe, wasn't just Canada. It's globally diversified across developed markets. So that includes Asia, that includes Europe, that includes the US, that does include Canada. So that's an important aspect of it. Fossil fuel free. Well, and social responsible, that's what you're used to at Van City with, with the ESG screens and, and reviews and engagements that take place. So there's nothing new there. And Edmund will talk a little bit more about that as we get further into the presentation. Public listed securities, these are tradable securities. So it's liquid. These aren't privately held securities. They're publicly listed stocks. And when we get right to the crux of it all, how, what are we doing? We're selecting the securities for their low level of historical volatility, but also for their ability to compound shareholder value. It's not just looking at low volatility stocks that, you know, that are just trading at the same price forever. It's low volatility stocks that have the ability to grow earnings, thereby compounding shareholder value. So how do we build this fund that we're talking about? So let's start with the security selection process. This here is just an overview. So what we start with is an investment universe. And then we go through some ESG screens that Edmund, to, Edmund will allude to later. Then we have a low volatility selection process. And I'll get into that later as well. And then we do a thorough ESG review. And from that, we select stocks for the fund. So now we're just going to go over and explain each of one of these little areas in more depth. So what is the investment universe? Well, I talked about we wanted it to be um, global. So we, the selection universe is the MSCI World Index. So we're basically going to be reviewing and looking at securities from the MSCI World Index, or roughly, I mean, 1,600 securities or stocks. That's where we're drawing this from. And so I'll pass this over to Edmund, and he'll talk about the, the first sort of uh, filter that we do. Edmund? Yeah, thanks, Mike. So yes, the fund goes through um, two levels of filtering from from uh, or well two two stages of uh, our ESG process. So, like our, every other fund that we offer here at Vancouver Investment Management, it goes through the same stringent process. It goes through the same uh, negative screen process as the first step. Um, so as you can see on your screen here, the first part is we take that MSCI index and the investment universe and we boil it down to stocks that we can actually own. That's not part of our exclusion criteria. So the exclusion criteria, of course, is we're a fossil fuel free. Uh, we don't invest in uh, any companies that are involved in the fossil fuel industry. Uh, and then the other five exclusions are military weapons, tobacco, and nuclear power, gambling, and uh, pornographic materials or adult entertainment. Uh, so that's the first part of the screen. And then once we do that, then we have a narrow universe um, from the MSCI index. And then we move on to the low volatility selection, which is sort of the character, it forms a characteristic of this fund. Um, so I'll let Mike talk about that, and then I'll come back to talk about the second stage of our ESG process. Mike? Thank you, Edmund. So this, this is where really we get into uh, building a low volatility fund. So what, what we do here is we take those stocks that have been, uh, that have passed the first screening, and we calculate a number of volatility measures for all of them. 
and I won't go into the details of the map but, or anything like that. Just going to say that there's a number of measures that we use um, to, to compare the levels of all historical volatility across the stocks in this selection universe. Um, we also have a diversified regional sector distribution of fund holdings that set. So let's just step back. So we calculate a number of measures of, of volatility for all the stocks that pass the ESG screen. And then we don't just want to compare them against each other. We want to compare them against peers. And that's really important because I'm, if, I'm not just going to compare an IT stock to a utility stock, because if I do, I'm going to end up with a utility fund. And I'm not just going to compare a consumer staples to an industrials, et cetera. We're going to compare them to their peers. So IT stocks, volatility levels are going to be compared against IT stocks. Uh, and we even take it a, a level further. IT stocks in Canada will be compared against IT stocks in Canada. Uh, IT stocks in the US will also be looked at in comparison there. So we do a real granular analysis on the volatility of each name to see, OK, first of all, how do you rank globally across the whole universe? Second of all, when we're going to make a selection and I want to choose some stocks from Canada and I want to choose some stocks in IT from Canada, which one's the least volatile? And then if I want to go and look in Europe and I want to choose uh, a, a consumer staples name in Europe, I'm going to compare it to other consumer staples in Europe. And the reason we do this is because we want to make sure we build a portfolio that is well diversified. We also want to build a portfolio that is well diversified, sorry, across sectors as well as regions. And that's important because we want to participate in the broad market views through the cycle. So we know if we just have utilities, they're not going to participate all the time. If we just have IT, they're not going to participate all the time. We want to have a well diversified portfolio of low volatility stocks because our goal here and our objective is to get market like returns, but at lower volatility. And to do that, we're going to have to have some sort of market like uh, regional exposures and sector exposures but just done differently, done with a, a lens of low volatility. So that's what's taking place in this low volatility selection process. We're finding those stocks that meet the criteria to give us Canadian exposure in the sectors we want, US exposure in the sectors we want, Asia, Europe, all across the developed market region to give us that broad, spectrum of exposures in the low volatility sphere. OK, Edmund. Yeah, and then this is the second step of our ESG process. Uh, so this is where the bulk of the work actually gets done. Uh, some of the steps that we go through is first we review for exposure to controversies. So again, this whole process uh, is the same as as every other fund that we offer. It goes through the same thorough stringent review process. Um, we screen for controversies. We also screen for residual fossil fuel exposure or high carbon footprint. Now, sometimes we get questions regarding this. Well, wouldn't any fossil fuel exposure be screened out um, from, from the first step? Um, and, and that's true, that does screen out many. Uh, however, sometimes there may be some companies that are not predominantly involved with fossil fuels, uh, but may own material interest in a fossil fuel company or a fossil fuel business. Uh, we see this sometimes with conglomerate type businesses. Uh, and if we just rely on the first step of that screen, uh, these companies will, will not be caught or, or filtered out. So it requires additional due diligence on our part. Um, and we do this for every company that reaches this step. Uh, we then further assess the company's performance across seven key categories. Um, now, for those who are not familiar with these, what these categories are or, or need a reminder, um, it's not just about environmental uh, concerns. That is one part of the seven categories. Um, there's also diversity, sustainable products, human rights, community relations, employee relations, uh, and corporate governance. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that every company that, that is selected for this fund excels in all these seven categories. Um, that would make a perfect company, and there, there's just simply no such thing as a perfect company. Um, but the companies that do make it through um, have 
I would say at least one category that they excel in, uh, and certainly no category is that they, they are considered a laggard in. And if a stock doesn't pass our ESG process at this point, um, then we go back to the previous step and, and we look for the low volatility, low volatility selection, we look for replacement, um, and then we go through this whole process again. So for the past, I would say six months or so, um, this has sort of been the bulk of the work where uh, a number of companies would come through, we would, we would notice something that doesn't quite uh, make the cut for us, and then we would go back um, as, a as a reiterative process, um, and then ultimately uh, come up with the portfolio that we have today. So we now are at the, um, the fund stocks um, portion. Okay, so if we just we just look at it, stocks selected for the fund. Okay, so what happened? They passed the ESG screens. They passed a thorough ESG review. They have low levels of volatility compared to regional and sector peers and uh, provide diversified regional and sector exposures. So, so we have these stocks. And now what do we do with them? Well, we have to build a portfolio. And so this is the next stage. So the first stage was just all about just selecting the vehicles to give us exposures. Now we're going to decide how we're going to build a portfolio from that. So here's the fun stocks. Now, to ensure we have the right weights, like we, we want, we have all these stocks right now. We have a bucket of, let's just say, 80 names that come from various regions and various sectors. Now, we want to make sure that we're true to the identity of the fund, and that is low volatility. So all 80 of those stocks, um, while there are going to be differences in the levels of volatility amongst them. So even though we select the lowest volatility names in, let's say, consumer staples, each of those names isn't going to be the same. So in keeping with uh, the, the objective of the fund, we're going to weight the names according to their level of volatility. So if I have a company with, very lo with low volatility in consumer staples and another company that I selected in consumer staples that is also low vol but slightly higher, the one with the lowest level of volatility between the two will get mo the most weight. So we're, we're kind of, we've selected stocks, let's just back up, we've selected stocks out of 1,500 names, let's say, we've selected 80 stocks as low volatility names. Now we're going to take it a step further and just say, okay, of those 80 stocks, within their peer group, the one with the least amount of volatility is going to get a little bit more weight. And that's our construction process. That's how we're building a fund from these, these stocks we selected. And we also predetermine the regional and sector weights. We, if we didn't, then we're going to start skewing the results again, and we might end up with a, a utility tilt or something that we didn't want to. So we're going to make sure we have the IT weights. We're going to make sure we have the Canadian weights, the U.S. weights. Everything we want will be predetermined. Then we're going to put these names in each one of those buckets. And then we're going to take that weight and we're going to distribute it according to who is least volatile and who is most volatile with the least volatile names getting the most weight. That's how we build the portfolio from those, those 80 so names that we selected. So that's how you get the VCIM Global Low Volatility Fund. And what it is, you get an actively managed, it's an actively managed fund that also we're working really hard through measures to keep turnover very low. We have annual rebalances in place and we may do additional trades to, to manage risk. So Throughout the course of the year, there could be some trades where we're just trying to maybe change the allocation a little bit across the countries, um, or if we want to change the allocation or exposures according to uh, the sector exposures. So there could be some little interim rebalances, but really the goal here is to have a nice uh, portfolio of 80 names that only needs to get rebalanced once a year, very low turnover, sort of a sort of a quiet portfolio that just is low volatile through all these different events and and can compound returns hopefully compound returns for investors with minimal turnover 
that's the goal here. And we put a lot of effort into the design and development, and we've done testing for it. And we're really excited to, to bring this to you. And, and you can see here on the left is just a snapshot of the type of names that you'll see in the fund. Remember, this is these are subject to change, of course. Could be changes for ESG, could be changes for volatility. Um, but that's just a snapshot of some of the names you can see. So now people go, what, why, why would you want to invest in the fund? Well, let's just think back to what we're trying to achieve here. The, it, it is an active strategy for sure. We're active in the ESG and we're active in the fund development. And the objective is to deliver long-term market-like returns, but with lower volatility. And it uses the same trusted ESG process that includes positive and negative screens, shareholder engagement, and proxy voting. It also could be a very nice complement for an investor that has maybe some more volatility, more volatile securities, and they just want to dampen that a little bit. So it can provide some balance and diversification to a portfolio of more volatile securities. So um, there's, there's a lot here. It might be something new for everybody. Very happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Great. Well, thanks, Mike. Thanks, Edmonds. Uh, we do actually have a couple of questions. And this first one, it kind of touches on what you were just talking about, Mike, and I'm sure this is actually on a few people's mind, but uh, equity volatility, it's become a major talking point around the markets recently. So how did the fund perform during the recent markets turmoil? Yeah, the fund performed as expected. And I, it, when the market was going down for, for the first little bit, it was fairly flat. For the first little bit and then when we had that really bad day um you know where things were down three four percent at a point in time the the fund when things were down four percent it was down two so you know that remember please this this is just a minor sh this is just um something that happened in the past right don't take it as something that's going to happen in the future but we have real evidence here outside of the testing environment that the fund did perform as expected in that it was much shallower price swings. Uh, could be maybe at the time, I think it was maybe 50% of the swing at the time. So, but something to remember, the price of the fund is expected not to go down as fast, but in a bull market rally, it's also expected not to go up as fast or as high. So remember that chart I talked about, the oscillations are damper, and that includes the up as well as the down. But I know it definitely would be reassuring in the market uh, downturn that we just had and, and potential future downturns that, that come about every now and then, that if your portfolio doesn't go down as much, it's, it's a really nice offset to a portfolio that other portfolio or other securities that may be impacted differently. Yeah, no, that, that's a great point, Mike. Again, this is not like a a no volatility fund. There's no such thing. It's a low volatility. So it's meant to minimize the, the vol that we see in the equity market, just shallower price swings. And, and what is the expected turnover of the fund, Mike? Oh, it, it's the expected turnover of the fund is going to be, I, I would say it's going to be probably sub 10%, maybe 5%, very, very, very low. In fact, a lot of the work that, that Edmund and I have done in developing the strategies around it is to minimize turnover. Um, and so what we do is we look at the stability, like I can take I can take a point estimate right now and say this name is has less has been less volatile over the year than this other name. But that's just a point estimate. So we've got series and we look to see how consistently is this name ranked in the lower percentiles of volatility? In other words, is this name pervasively have a lower level of volatility than other names? And that's an important criteria in our selection. So we're not just taking a point in time estimate, we're also incorporating historical patterns as well. Okay, and there's just a couple more questions. I think we got a few minutes, so it actually works quite well. So. Uh, first one, would a company ever be sold for reasons that are not to do with volatility? That's a good question. 
Yeah, that, that's a good question. I mean, obviously, if something fundamentally is breaking, you know, I have a fiduciary responsibility to look after your assets, and I'm not going to hold it if it's if it's not performing. Like we said at the beginning, they have to perform. They have to be able to compound things. And if there's an insolvency issue or an ESG issue that Emma can talk about comes up, then, yeah, we will look at selling those. We're not going to, I'm not going to turn over the fund for for minor adjustments in volatility levels. Um, because the, the whole thing is a portfolio of 80 plus stocks. And I'm not going to change something just because some slight shifts in volatility, unless there's something pervasive or, or something that's really changed significantly that changed the whole portfolio makeup and does no longer serve a purpose and doesn't belong. So, um, yeah, there will be other reasons that we might want to get rid of something that isn't just related with low volatility, but those should, I hope, fingers crossed that those are far and few between. Yeah. Okay. And the final question, and to be honest, Mike, you did touch on this already, but it, it's a good question. So I'll, I'll just ask it. Um, how do you see this fund complementing the other uh, Van City equity funds? Yeah, I think this is a, a it, it's a conversation you probably want to have with, with your advisor to see how it fits in. But I, I personally have directed uh, my advisor to, to put me into this fund. I, I'm older now and it's more important to, you know, I don't want as much volatility and, and things, but I think it's a really nice compliment for really if, if, if volatility, uh, if you can't sleep at night or whatever, then maybe this is the way you get your equity exposure with a little bit of less volatility. It also has, it's got more of a div yield than you get from the market. So it's kind of a combination of, of dividend income as well as capital appreciation but with a little less volatility. So I think it's a way to get your market exposure and maybe to dampen out uh, the volatility that you would experience them in some other type of strategies that uh, that could be more volatile at times. Um, so I think really just think it out with, with your, you know, talk it out with your advisor, but I think it's a very nice compliment for people who are looking or investors that are looking to, to maybe prepare for a shifting as maybe the investment horizon is shortening for you, uh, or you just want to dampen the volatility for other reasons and maybe a little bit of capital protection, but still maintain exposure in the equity markets. All those type of areas would be reasons maybe to consider this fund. And there, there's lots of others as well, but those just come to the forefront. A little bit of capital appreciation while maintaining equity exposure, getting a bit more of a yield pickup than you get in the broad market and maybe a nice compliment to a more volatile series. Thanks, Mike. We did actually get one uh, last minute question in, and so I'll give you one minute to answer this one. Yep. Uh, what is the return expected in this fund? Well, I, all I can say is historically, when I was looking at the testing environment, and remember the, the past does not uh, predict the future, but what, what, what it did do is it, it gave you broad market returns. So at, at, at through the full cycle, broad market equity like returns uh, with lower volatility. But uh, so I think we can ex I, I would expect my expectation is is that over a full cycle, you, you, you we hopefully we will get the same. But that I can't really say that. All I can say is in the test environment, that's what we experienced. And and but I think our objective in the way we're designing and building portfolio is is the objective is to generate market like returns broad market like long term returns at lower levels of volatility great thanks mike and thanks to everybody who spoke today and of course thank you to everyone on the call for joining us uh, like i said earlier this has been recorded and each of these two funds does have their own respective uh, website so you'll see a lot of information on each of those and Soon you will also see this recording on the respective website. So again, thank you for joining us and hope everybody has a great day.